Welcome to my channel um, about science, cybersecurity, uh, software engineering, machine learning. So I'm Hector and I'm going to talk today about malware and the answers that we are now dealing with in the, in the malware field. So just to give you a little bit of background about myself, I've been working in malware for about seven years. I'm a lecturer at King's College London, even though my lectureship position is not related to malware, it's more related to software engineering. Everything is quite connected. Um, just to let you know, I'm not representing the university of any kind, I'm just representing my own opinions. Okay, so you can see that in many moments I will probably uh, be a bit less uh, correct in terms of talking about these things, but just to let you know, it's not the university opinion, it's my own opinion. Um, what else? So basically, just to give you a little bit of an overview about my research and the things that I have been doing in the last few years. So basically I have been doing, since my PhD, a lot of work in machine learning. I used to work a lot in clustering, using evolutionary computation to create clustering algorithms, etc, etc. Then when I moved to UCL, I worked for a very long time in malware detection and in software engineering. And also I started to work in uh, software testing. And you can see that there are a lot of fields that are intersecting. So basically my research is a mix of a lot of things and I have a lot of lines. So you will see a lot of different videos of different topics that can go from machine learning, from malware detection, quantum computers, smart cars. If you are already following the videos in Spanish, you can see that I'm also filling a bit more of the different gaps that you can find here. But let's just go to the main topic. Let's go to the problem of malware. And the question is, is malware a real problem? So I imagine that all of you have uh, probably an antivirus or have ever deal with an antivirus in any kind of sense. So the question is, why do we have to care about malware? Okay, so what's that? What's this thing called malware? So basically, you just have it in front of you, you just have the description, is every kind of software that is trying to disrupt your system. Okay? Um, the definition is quite fuzzy. So for me, for example, the Facebook application could be malware, while for others it would be a legitimate app. So basically, the idea is that malware is only considered malware if whatever they are doing against you, like stealing your data, stealing your identity, stealing your bank account, is done with no consent. It might be true that if you have like a million pages in the terms and consent, it's impossible to read it before you accept it. But still, let's assume that does kind of consent, or at least legal consent in terms of these companies, and let's focus only on the malware that is more like a criminal kind of software, okay? So, where can we find this malware? Where can we find this specific software that is trying to disrupt our system? So basically, we know that malware can be in every operating system, so there are people saying that there's no malware for Mac, or there's no malware for Linux, that's not true, you have malware in every system, Windows and Android are the mo more popular at the moment, or the most popular, sorry, at the moment. However, you can find malware in every single computer or every single device, even in your PlayStation. Obviously, you can have malware in your browser, which translate to a lot of different systems, because you can also have malware in JavaScript. And even the different kinds of files that you have in the system, like PDS, Word file, Excel file, they can all be malware. They can all be malicious. They can all perform something that you don't want to do inside of your system. And basically what they can do is to use vulnerabilities of your system in order to attack it. Okay? So what can the malware do? So just to give you a little bit of a background of why that software is trying to go into your system, basically one of the main ideas is to take some sensitive information from you. Also, it it can try to control your computer. So for example, if I want to run a denial of service attack to a computer that is uh, very powerful or to a cloud system that is like Google, I will need a lot of devices working together at the same time. And they will try to attack at the same time. So in that case, I will try to control a huge amount of computers, a huge amount of devices. That I, I remember there was a, a really big attack that was based on multiple TVs um, or smart devices that were at home. And basically they, they used it to attack, I think it was maybe Facebook or Google, just try not to say many names, but 
at the end, they managed to create a denial of service attack that just put the system down, okay? And also, one of the things that is very popular is that they will try to steal your identity. So with that, they can just person they can just take your persona and try to do things malicious against you. So how do you get infected? So why if the malware will go into your system? What what might you be doing wrong? So in general, you will always find people blaming you about oh you just click in the rock in the wrong link of this email or this spam or you were just downloading a file that was maybe uh, not very legitimate or you were trying to download something that you shouldn't be downloading so basically what they try to tell you is you were careless so it's your fault but that's not always true that's not the reality of malware the reality is that maybe there's a vulnerability in your browser and you are just navigating and someone try someone use that vulnerability to infect you. Even if you are in a public Wi-Fi, people can use that to attack your system, okay? Or even worse, you might have no idea. Your system is already vulnerable and they just attack it. You didn't do anything at all and they just entered the system because the system has vulnerabilities. It can be your router. Actually, there was a famous um, cleaning process of some, um, some defenders that were cleaning a lot of routers and basically they claim like a million half a million I think routers in the UK that were just infected with malware with no notice just because they were vulnerable so you can see that even if you are doing nothing you can also be a victim of malware okay so what will be the best protection so I think the best protection is just to disconnect yourself from the internet disconnect the computer switch it off don't switch it on again, and that's it. So you don't need to worry anymore about malware or anything like that. But because that's not realistic, let's try to keep everything up to date, something that is very important. Let's try to make sure that we are not putting ourselves in very risky situations, keep the antivirus updated, um, and also the most important bit is try to be lucky. So if you put yourself in situations where you are more likely to get malware, like coronavirus is more likely that you will get it so be careful in those situations and good luck just to give you a little bit of an overview about antiviruses now that we were talking about them in i think it was 2004 uh, this gentleman right here brian die which was the vp of informatic security of Symatech, he said this famous quote uh, or saying that antivirus is dead so what this means? So basically during years, Antivirus has been using huge databases of signatures from malware in order to be able to detect new malware. The problem is that this was useful at the beginning, but malware can create a lot of variants very, very fast. And these variants can destroy the signatures. So what Ryan Dye means is that in order to be able to cope with the current demand of malware, we need new methodologies that are better into detecting these kind of systems. So that's basically what I've been trying to do in my research and a lot of people in the community, trying to find new ways to detect malware because this is not scaling well. And we have a huge problem because in this embrace, we are not just a step backwards. We are really, really, really back in the Android. So they are like year, light years in front of us, okay? So there is a lot of work to do and there is a lot of research to perform this. And why are we in this situation? Well, first of all, malware became very sophisticated in the last few years. We will talk about history in a few, in a few moments. Then there is a huge interest on malware, economical interest, criminal interest. We will talk about this also. But also because malware use concealment strategies that are very effective. Just to give you the perspective that I always try to give people when I'm talking about defending ourselves from malware. It is always easier to attack than to defend. Because when you are attacking, you only need to be lucky once. But when you are defending, you have to be lucky all of the time. So you just need one single mistake to break a defense. Okay? So that's the reason we need to be very careful when we are defending. And we need to be as complete as possible with our methodologies. 
So let's talk about the types of malware that we can find. First, we will start with the classics, the most common one, the one that we all hear about, anti uh, sorry, viruses. That's where the word antivirus comes from. So basically a virus, what it's going to try to do is to infect your malware, sorry, infect you with malware, infect every single machine that is connected. The virus is going to try to propagate like a normal virus and it's try to take control all over the place. Then you have Trojan horses. Where's a Trojan horse? Facebook. No, Facebook is not a Trojan horse, but something like Facebook. I give you something for free, okay? But I have an interest underneath. I want to steal your information. I want to steal some credential from you. I want to steal your credit bank account, whatever. And just give you a frame that you are going to use. And I will just use that as a Trojan horse, basically. You know probably the metaphor of the mythological legend of the Trojan horse that was between the Trojans and the Greeks. Then you also have worms. Worms are like viruses, but they try to infect the network. So the moment that you have a worm in a network, the worm is going to try to infect every single computer connected to the network. And that's going to be another malware that is going to be very common, especially in the last few years. But my favorite, let's say, is botnets. So botnets are going to be a kind of malware that is going to try to take control of your system. So basically the botnet will have a command and control that is going to be controlling several different devices infected by, with the botnet and the command and control will be sending orders to every single device. So then the devices will perform the tasks that they want to, they want to do like attacking another system, getting some credentials, credit cards, whatever, and they will send information to the command and control. So botnets are quite popular because they scale very well. If you want to go to something a bit more modern, uh, you also have adware. Uh, adware malware, which is basically in a kind of gray scale uh, because it's not really that malicious. But at the same time, what this malware is going to try to do is to take the ads that you find on the internet and change the links connected to those apps. So for example, if you are navigating and you find um, an advertisement about an Amazon book and you click on that advertisement instead of going as a click to the profile of the person who owns the web page, you will go to the profile of the malicious attacker. And that means that the profits of you buying that book will go to the malicious person that puts you that adware in your system. Another one is a spyware, something that probably if you just has been hearing about a little bit of paranoia, you might already hear that there are systems that are spying us, switching over the camera, etc., etc. So basically that will be the spyware system that are trying to spy on you, getting your documents, activating your camera, activating your microphone, so more or less trying to do all these kind of malicious things. You also have the crypto miners. So basically this malware will be installed in your system and what they will try to do is in the moment you, during these times that you are not really using your system, I'm going to start mining cryptocurrencies. So this is very common with some cryptocurrencies like Zcash or Monero that might not need that extreme GPU power in order to scale. So when you are not really noticing because you might be charging your phone or charging your computer, the crypto miners will be trying to collect more uh, coins or we're trying to generate more coins just by mining using your device. And last but not least, one that is very, very popular, the ransomware. So the ransomware will just go to your computer, infect your computer, and it will try to ask for a ransom in order to disinfect the computer. So basically the most popular one encrypts all of your files. I probably you hear about the WannaCry ransomware and ask you for a ransom in bitcoins in order to decrypt everything. Okay, so this is more or less what you have as modern malware. So the question here is, was this malware unreal? So what are the historical events that bring us to this specific point? And that's what I want to introduce now. So basically everything started in 1971 with a malware that was just um, a normal test to check whether people were able to create this kind of malware that was called Creeper. Okay, and then a few years later in 74, we have the first real malware called Rabbit. So this was the first malware that, the first virus actually, that was able to propagate. 
Then we started with the first Trojan in 75. We have the first boot sector malware in 81. Then in 83, we have the term virus already becoming popular. Actually, there is a famous video more or less around this time when you had the first virus propagating all through a university. I will put the video just in the, in the description. So if you want to watch it, it's a very interesting video to watch. In 86, you have the first malware from the boot sector that was focused on Microsoft DOS. And in the following years, during the 80s, you start having several malware campaigns. But in the 90s is when they started with the concealment strategies. Is when they started with polymorphism in 1990, uh, with metamorphism a bit later in 2002. We also have macros in Microsoft Word that were acting as viruses in, in 1995. That was actually quite recent for Microsoft Word to, uh, for the history of Microsoft Word because it was more or less when it was released and it became popular. You also have the first malware in Linux that was in 96. And actually Linux was released in 1991. So you can imagine how fast people start creating malware. And you also have malware for, for ROM. One that became very, very popular in the, in, in the millennium, in the 2000s, was the I Love You malware. So this was one of the first social engineering malware. Basically, everyone was receiving an email saying, I love you. Um, when they opened the email, it was when they got inf got infected. Actually, this is the reason a lot of people blame the users for getting infected of malware. So basically, this malware uh, was trying to focus on the social abilities of the person who was sending the malware. And it was so smart that actually it was able to infect a lot of people. Then in the 2000s, we start having malware for Mac OS, for the current popular Macintosh systems. You also had like huge campaigns infecting millions of computers, especially Windows servers like Conflict Conflictor. You have malware that was so sophisticated that was even to attack the nuclear plants of a country. In this case, it was Iran. And this malware was Tunex. This malware was so sophisticated that it just infected every single computer that it found in the way until it reached the centrifugators for the nuclear plants in Iran. Once the centrifugator was trying to centrifugate the uranium in the nuclear plants, they start failing because of the malware and that spoiled the whole nuclear plant of Iran. It's very likely that this malware comes from a government, even though it's not completely clear, okay? Also, if you are familiar with the history of Android, Android was released, as I remember properly, in 2009. So in 2010, you start having malware for Android. Why is that? Because the problem with Android, as many systems that came before and after it, is that even though we made some mistakes in the past with Windows or all the operating system and we try to fix them. The moment that we are creating something new, we forgot about, we tend to forget about these mistakes and we tend to repeat them. And this is also something that is happening with WebAssembly. So basically this makes that a lot of security problems that we used to have before come back in new systems. So you have to be very careful when you are trying to create a new system to make sure that you are up to date with the security uh, protections that the system should have considering the previous protection that the system has, that already exists had, okay? Then we also have the popular ransomware campaigns. The first one, the CryptoLocker, was in 2013 and the most popular one that probably all of you have suffered, WannaCry, was in 2017. If you want to know a little bit more about malware campaigns, you can just go to this webpage, the APT security list or secure list, and you will find a lot of new campaigns with description, etc., etc. And it's very interesting just to have a look and see how the malware campaigns are actually followed and how the malware propagates, which country has been infected, etc., etc. I think it's, it's a very interesting resource to be familiar with malware. Okay. So basically, if we ask ourselves what's the aim of the malware, why the malware is in our system, we can actually reflect about how the malware works and what the malware is taking from us. So the first end is social interest. Collect information about people, collect information about you, collect your credential, taking control of your computer, and basically also attack these systems. 
If we want to think about other interests, we also have the economical interest. Basically, this is a business and people are going to use it to get benefit. So I can maybe blackmail people who I have infected because I'm getting some sensitive information from them. I can be mining cryptocurrencies. I can be using a ransomware so I can get a payment in cryptocurrencies. I can get bank accounts, credit cards, etc. So there's a lot of economical interest in infected computer with malware. There's also industrial interest. So for example, if I'm a company and I want to attack my competitor, let's say that they are making a specific kind of drink and unable to attack the machines that are used to create the formula of that drink or to mix the formula of that drink. With a malware, I can try to change the parameters of that formula and even if I remain inside of the parameters that are allowed by the system, by the natural system of the machine, I can find a combination of, of parameters that create a product whose quality is worse. Okay? And that will be also a kind of attack. In this case, it will be an attack on the quality of the product. I can also steal IP, obviously, because if you have access to the files, you can steal a lot of things. And also you have criminal interest. So basically you can create, they, they, they can use this to create a criminal network. How do they do that? So if I create a malware and I can blackmail people, what I can try to do is to create mules. Mules are people that are basically just taking packages and move them from a, from a place to another. Okay. And they are used when you have, imagine that you make these kind of big campaigns, you get millions in cryptocurrencies, but you are not able to buy anything because otherwise the police will be able to track you. So basically what you do is that you buy the package, you send it to the first person, the first person send it to the second person, and so on so forth until the package physically reaches you. And this is called a mules network, okay? And also you can target the specific people. You can target politicians, you can target uh, people with enough power to be interested by, by, for blackmailing. So it's something that you have to keep in mind when people are designing these specific campaigns. They also have a criminal target. Okay, so this is basically what I want to tell you today. In the next video, we will see more about how malware evolves and about how it's used in the, in the current situation. So, so how it protects from the detection system. Okay, I hope you liked the video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one. Thank you.